Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all stand and begin our service tonight. How many of you are glad to be here tonight? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to read a passage of Scripture right now. Psalms 27, 1 through 4 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come up to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of his temple. I'm so glad to be here tonight in the Lord's house. I'm looking forward to what he's going to do in this place. Let's lift him up and praise him as they begin to sing tonight. Just a
Come on, can we do that? Can we just lift our hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for your grace, God. Oh, for everything that you've done for me, Lord, I want to give you praise and I want to give you thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We want to go to the Lord in prayer right now. I want you to remember my wife, remember Heidi and Jesse. Uh, remember my mom and my stepdad. They're not feeling too good, but I know a prayer answering God, Brother Jerry. He's still on the throne. He's still in control. And I know a prayer answering God. You got any requests on the right-hand side, Just Brother Blake? Okay, Brother Jill. The Arnigan family, yes, yes. All right, Sister Heather. Okay. Sister Crystal. Okay. Sister Sharon. Okay, Brother Bill's over there. All right. Sister Rita. Okay. All right. Sister Rhonda. Okay. Sister Scarlett. Middle section, just the Eloise. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, all right. Childlike faith that's what it's all about, Sister Margaret. Okay, all right, Sister Michelle. Sister Shauna. Okay. On my left. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Okay. A lot of cancer. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Maria. Okay. Anybody on the platform? Brother Richard. Okay. 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 How many of you got faith tonight? The Bible says all you need is the faith as the size of a mustard seed. Now, now, the great thing about the mustard seed, it's small in size, but it grows into a great big tree that the birds nest in. So we need to let our faith out tonight. I said we need to let our faith out tonight. I heard the word cancer mentioned several times, Brother Ronnie. God can heal cancer. It doesn't matter to him. He took those stripes for my healing. He took those stripes for your healing. So let's take these things before the Lord tonight. Lord, we love you. We magnify you, God. We ask you, Lord, that you will be done, Lord. You took those stripes. For our healing, God, and we claim it tonight, God. For all those names, God, that were called out, God, you know each and every one of them. You know the end from the beginning, God, and we release faith. I said we release faith in this place tonight, God, knowing that you're a healer. God, you've proven it to me time and time again, God. You've shown me, Lord. You've healed me, Lord, and I believe tonight, God, our unsaved loved ones, God, each and every one of them, the prodigal that's walked away from you, God, we're believing that they're brought back, Lord. Each and every prayer request, the unknown request, God, you know it. We ask you, Lord, in faith tonight, God, that you see that it's done, God. In Jesus' name we pray tonight. In Jesus' name we pray tonight.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. I thought as they were singing that song, I've got a lot to be thankful for. I could have been one of the statistics. I could have been one of the numbers. See, I came from a single-parent home. I came from an alcoholic father, Brother Ronnie. I could have, I could have fallen by the wayside, and I could have turned up a whole lot different, but God got a hold of me when I was 12 years old. And my life's never been the same, and I, I, I thank him for that. Yeah. I thank him for that. Never went without a meal. Never went without a home. Never went without a vehicle. I got so much to thank him for. Sometimes it's just thanking him for the small things that he does for us on a daily basis. So I've got so much to thank him for tonight. We're going to take up offering at this time. And we're going to have, have a Sister Scarlett put the prayer on the border. Show, show the ways they give. Givelify, use that PayPal, available at riverbendpentecostals.com. Cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, 1031 Mill Street, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. should put the prayer up. This prayer works, folks. It's a blessing. It, it, it works. If you'll repeat after me, upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commission, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, Bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Bring your offerings, please.
some praise right now. Come on, lift up some high praise to the Lord. He's forever faithful. He's forever faithful. His mercy, his compassion, he's forever. Come on, praise him. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Hallelujah. 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 We lift you up. We praise you. We magnify and exalt the name of Jesus. There is no other name, no other God who lives and reigns forever. What a beautiful spirit that's here tonight. I, uh, I'm, we're going to dismiss the, the children and the students in a moment, just in a moment here. I'm glad Carson back at church and his sisters. And, amen. He's, uh, we've been missing him. But uh, y'all stand with us, if you would, if you're able. If you're able, just as an act of faith. And um, I heard Sister, uh, Sister Sharon turn in prayer for Brother Bill Goldair. And I saw some pictures of him right before church, and he's in bad shape. And uh, he has, a, from what I understand, not a good prognosis. And I remember a message he preached right here in this church about trophies in hell. Uh, it was an incredible message. And then he preached about Lazarus coming out of the tomb. And there was a reason, Brother Jerry, why they, he said, loose him and let him go as he took off that old garment. And I, I want us to pray. Uh, uh, I, I felt just, and it, just standing right there just a second ago, I felt just a wave of a burden come over me. Now, I know God's a healer. I know he's a healer. I've been healed. All right, I felt the healing power of God deliver me, touch me. And healing was already taken care of at Calvary. He doesn't have to come up with any new way to move. It's done at Calvary. By his stripes, we are healed. It's done. But if you would, Brother Bill Goldair, pastors in Salisbury, North Carolina, a uh, very close friend of Brother Donnie and Sister Sharon, and um, I know circumstances have changed, but this just this week I was thinking of Sister Karen singing Brother Goldair's favorite song. Somewhere between here and there, there's going to be a healing service. Brother Don Johnson used to sing that song. and But I, I just feel like we can touch heaven right now. Do y'all believe we can? I believe we can touch heaven right now. And I believe God's going to move in his life. Let's pray with us right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, you said we have not because we ask not, so we ask right now for healing. We praise you for every miracle we know about, every healing, every victorious deliverance. I saw about scales falling off of eyes, and I heard today of withered feet that, that begin to swell up to their natural size. I curse that cancer that has invaded his body, and I command it to flee under the authority and the power of the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, it hears our prayer right now. The enemy hears our prayer. And we pray the prayer of faith, God, right before you. We raise up holy hands in the presence of the Lord without wrath or doubting. God, I declare victory and healing and restoration. You can do it. You're able. I praise you in advance for what you're going to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Carson, you want to be first? Well, go ahead, bud. All right. I'd like for all the Riverbend kids to come now line up behind Carson. Oh, here we go. Get big. Danny boy just got about halfway up here and he crawled daddy. He'll be fine. I'm glad y'all are here tonight. I mean, we have some new faces here. Aren't we glad they're here? Huh? Yeah. Let them know we're welcome. 
Amen. All right. Y'all going to be good tonight? Have a good class? Brother Terrence and Brother Blake are bringing the word. Y'all go ahead on back. Be good for them. Let the Lord speak to you. Yeah, you take him back. You take him back until he gets used to it. <laughs> yeah. River Bend ignited that students age 12 to 18 can be dismissed. Did we have enough handouts, Brother Ronnie? Did we have enough? All right. Everybody got a handout that wanted one, I hope. And uh, um, do I have more? No, sir. No, sir. But the copier's fired up, ready to go. I even made a few extra. That's what I'm talking about. Man, I love it. I love it. And uh, um, that's, uh, that's exciting. Thank you for coming tonight to Bible study. Um, we're going to just keep moving toward the Lord and toward, uh, uh, be very, let me give you, can I give you a note of warning? Can I give you a word of warning? Be careful that you don't get distracted by anything. Don't get distracted. Uh, the enemy, there's a lot of good things happening. We have four more baptisms scheduled, one tonight. We have three more after that. That'll put us at 30 people that we baptized in Jesus' name this year. And, uh, and it's just, it's just going to keep growing up. But don't get distracted. Don't get distracted, whether in the house of God or out there. Because the enemy's going to distract you. And it may feel right. It may feel right, and you may feel justified, but be very careful, because if it is not aligned with what God is doing, you're out of the will of God. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I just feel it. I feel it strongly. Uh, and let me tell you something else before I even get into here. Pray. Pray for to not be judgmental about anything toward anybody. And when you start praying, the Lord's going to show you we are a lot more judgmental with small things than we are with big things. And we form an opinion very quickly knowing just part of the story. Yeah, I should be getting amens from everybody up in here. And I'll tell you, the, about the only thing that gets me nervous when I don't get amens is got a whole lot of guilty folks. <laughs> like, oh, man, why do you have to go and say that after I've just been going a good mad today? I had a good one boiling up inside of me. Man, I cut loose with several zingers. And uh, I, I saw a lot of stuff to upset me today, and I was feeling pretty good about myself. And now he said, stop. Well, uh, that's the Lord telling you to stop because you don't want to miss out on what God's doing right here. You don't want to miss out on it. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Uh, the book of Ephesians is written by the apostle Paul to the saints. Everybody say the saints. Now let's, let's review just a little bit. You're going to get this in your gizzard. Come on, I'm up here. I'm up here. Brother Ronnie done came through the door and he got settled down and about three-fourths of y'all was checking him out coming through that door. <laughs> Don't think nothing about it. If I came through the door, they'd be checking me out too. Because <laughs> there's something about whatever's happening out there is always more important than what's happening up here. Because it can drag you just that fast. Right after I just said, don't get distracted, Brother Ronnie came through the door and it was like, whoosh. I mean, I know he's a cutie pie and everything, but come on now. Yeah, somebody's back there saying, Lord, help us, or something like that. But uh, I, I, I'm really trying to be light because I'm fixing to get right. And I, I want you loosened up just a little bit. And then, uh, then we will move into uh, 
You have to get to a place where you are constantly telling the Lord, change me, mold me, make me, bring me, uh, chastise me. Has anybody ever prayed for the Lord to do that? I have. Because it's Sister Maria, there must be something good there because the book says he chastens those that he loves. I pray, Lord, don't let me be stupid. Don't let, don't let me miss you. Don't let me get in the flesh. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the Gospels. But we know that primarily, though they're not found in the Old Testament, they are Old Testament books. Okay? They are in the New Covenant after the 400 years of silence between the book of Malachi and the book of Matthew. But then there is the book of Acts, and that is where you learn how the early church was founded, formed, birthed. You learn how to get saved. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the life of Jesus and the establishment of the disciples. The book of Acts is how to get saved, how the early church started. And Romans through Jude are written to church folks. Okay, that's so important to know who it is addressed to. And so you learn how to stay saved in Romans through Jude, and then Revelation is a mixture of some things that have already happened and a whole lot of things that are about to happen Why we know we better get right. All right? Anybody ever read Revelation and got scared? Not because you couldn't understand it, but because you could? Okay. All right. We're in the last days. We're in the last days. So what we're teaching tonight is how to make it. So the book of Ephesians is written by the Apostle Paul to the saints at Ephesus. With saint, of course, referring to believers or the people of God. But the word saint literally means holy one. And it speaks of one who has been set apart for sacred service to God. That has got to be established. Get rid of the mentality that the pastor wants you to get right so he looks good. It's not true. We got to all get right so God looks good. Okay? We have been set apart for sacred service to God. He has a vested interest in us being right. Not being cool, not being happy, but being holy and being right. Now, clearly, this epistle is written to those who, following in the steps of the apostles in hearing, believing, and through obedience, have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can look that up for yourself in Ephesians 1, 12 and 13, Ephesians 2, 1 through 6. The Apostle Paul very clearly says, we preach to you what we heard and you believed it and you trusted and you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And then he goes on in Ephesians 2 and 1 through 6, also give us a glimpse into the life of, of what these church folks used to live. Okay? It gives us a glimpse into the life they once lived. And it is a life, and I'm summarizing very quickly because I want to get into the meat of this, but it is a life that was guided by the course of this world and the enemy of our soul. He's referred to in Ephesians 2 as the prince and the power of the air. That is the devil. That is the enemy. He's a liar. He's a stinker. He does not like you, and whatever you get from him is going to be a lie. All right? But that when we live for self, we're really living for the devil. Our flesh aligns with hell. Our spirit aligns with heaven. Period. End of discussion. That's the way it is. It was a life separated, or excuse me, governed by the desires of our flesh and our mind. A life separated from God and dead in sins. But now grace has afforded them the opportunity to be resurrected with Jesus Christ through faith. And when you are born again of the water and of the spirit, you are through faith a new creation empowered to accomplish the will of God, which is our purpose from creation. 
You will hear me say that a lot, and I hope you hang with me. I know I'm covering a lot, but you're born with a purpose. You had a purpose before you were born. Sin messed it up. Jesus Christ came to fix it and to empower us to accomplish the will of God, which is our purpose from creation. The Ephesus church is a microcosm of the church as a whole. It is men and women who once served sin to the fullest, estranged from God. They have now been brought together as the church, and hear me as I tell you, there is a church. There are not many churches. There is a church. How do we know that? I'll make sure you believe me. How do we know that? Where does it say it at? And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Matthew chapter 16, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. There is a church, the ecclesia, the called out body of believers, born again of the water and spirit, cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and launched into ministry to fulfill the will of God. There is a church built on the rock. All of them are built on the rock. I'm going to preach this again very soon, but everybody ain't going to heaven. I wish they were, but everybody ain't going to heaven. And the Lord is not going to adjust the path so we can all make it easier. He does indeed say, I feel like I'm waiting a little bit, but I'm going to wait. I'm stepping high. I'm kind of a tall feller. We're going to make it. The Lord has through faith, changed these people into a new creation, empowered to accomplish the will of God, which is their purpose from creation. He has brought men and women together who once served sin to the fullest and brought them together as the church, built upon the rock, and the rock is the unshakable revelation of who Jesus is. Again, Matthew 16. He said, whom do men say that I am? Some say they are Elijah. Some they say they are Esaias. Some say you're John the Baptist or one of the prophets. But whom say ye that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Okay, the rock is the knowledge of who Jesus is. The Peter was not the rock. Okay, he was not the rock. The knowledge of who Jesus is, is the rock. You've got to know who he is. Okay, this church is built on the unshakable revelation of who Jesus is. And we, as, whoo, Lord help me, as the, Creation of God, recreated, if you will, Brother Jerry, from not just his physical image, but to his spiritual image. We reflect the creative power of God through the infilling of the Spirit and baptism in Jesus' name, because baptism buries the old man, and you rise to walk in newness of life filled with the resurrecting power of God. And we are established, the church is established as an entity of faith, hope, and love. Why does it matter in those? Because those are the only three things that abide. Now abide at these faith, hope, and love in an unending crescendo of living praise. Hear me as I tell you, every day you live, every breath you take, you are a reflection. You are designed to be a reflection of the mercy and the grace of God. Every day that you live, you are to be a living praise. And there is something beautiful when we are created in his image, born again of the water and of the spirit, and then we willfully, freely, and gladly open our mouth and lift our hands and our words alive with who we are. You are a child of God and you were created to do his will. 
I don't know who I was talking to the other day. Maybe it was Tuesday night. But I don't care what you do for a living. That ain't what you're born to do. You were born to be a witness for Jesus Christ. And he has given us everything we need to make sure that happens. Listen to what the Apostolic Study Bible says. I know Sister Crystal just bought one of those. And let me tell you what was super cool. She said, I hear people talking about it, and I see people having them. What is it? I want one. So I sent her a website, told her to get one. She loves it. Ain't that right? All right, the Apostolic Study Bible. Are you ready? Here's what it says. In essence, the blessings and reality of the future kingdom are reaching back into the present, informing and empowering the church to serve as a living witness of the coming kingdom. Did you get that? Eternity, the kingdom of heaven, reaches back and empowers us to be reflective of heaven. You know what that means? We better tighten up. Seriously. We better recognize who we are, Sister Maria, and that we don't have the option of putting on our worldly clothes and taking them off and putting on our godly clothes, and I'm speaking figuratively right now, though literally applies as well. We don't have the option to have a dual nature, which was an easy way out in a lot of I don't want to delve off into it, but there was a strong religious movement even in the, uh, the, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans that it talks about in the book of Revelation lends itself to this same ideology that says I am a two-part human being. I am spirit and I am flesh and they don't cross. So I can be right with God and right with me at the same time. Isn't that what a whole lot of people live Think about it. I can be saved in many arenas and nothing change in my life. Let me tell you something, honey. I love them people. God help them people. We need to reach them people. But that way ain't the way the Lord rolls around here. You get a hold of the Holy Ghost, then he gets a hold of you. And things start happening in your life. And there's going to be some things that you're going to reach out to touch and the Holy Ghost is going to say, uh-uh. No. And let me tell you something, Brother Ronnie, there's a loosening of the power of God that may turn loose in this place tonight that will energize the recovery ministry when people will realize that as they submit themselves to God, I can't stick a pipe in my mouth no more. I can't put a bag in my pants no more. I can't go to, uh, I can't go to the liquor store no more. I just can't do it. Even though my flesh wants to, the Holy Ghost says I can't. Say, oh, that's an oversimplification. Let me tell you what an oversimplification is. It's for us to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and still serve the flesh. The simplest thing that we can do, that's why the Lord said, I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. Just let me minister for a minute. The, whole, the, the apostle Paul said, I'm scared to death uh, that as the serpent beguiled Eve, uh, that so you would be beguiled, so would you be deceived and tricked uh, and moved away from the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, because the gospel is that simple. If you sell out to him and if you let your faith rise up to the point where you recognize what he's done in you, there's nothing out in the world can control control you anymore. We're a little bit scared. We're a little bit scared to amen that because sometimes we still struggle. Let me tell you something. Get ready to struggle because you're going to struggle the rest of your life. But God gave you the power to overcome the struggle. And God gave you the power to win the fight. And you're not destined to lose but win. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Jesus Christ died to set you free from sin. I'm sorry I got off track, but I'm... we're reflecting heaven. We're not reflecting earth. 
When we're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we learn to walk in newness of life. We are examples of the heavenly kingdom. Ephesians chapter number one and chapter number two tell us very clearly that the Holy Ghost is the earnest of our inheritance. That means what we feel in the presence of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's a down payment on heaven. It is. It is. It's, it's a down payment of what, it's a taste of what heaven really is to encourage you to stay with it. So the book of Ephesians, along with the other gospels, is then a road map of sorts where we hear a word from ahead of us that says this is the way you walk in it. It's a pattern of living as determined by the Spirit of God. Hear me as I tell you this. There is no area of your life that God is not interested in. You reconcile this. How could he be diligent enough to number the hairs on your head and have areas of your life that you can keep from him? It's not possible, Miss Jane. It's not possible. Boy, I feel Jesus. I'm not going to be here for a little bit, so I'm going to make sure if I tap out on the road somewhere or something that y'all ain't going to forget when I was here. <laughs> Everybody with me right now? What the church is? We are a representation. I felt so. Let me see if I can say it. I want to say it right now. It's going to come to me. It's going to come to me. It's going to blow your whole thinking about there is nothing wrong with people struggling and still coming to the house of God. That is not a hypocrite. And if you call them a hypocrite, you're an idiot. I got that from the Jeff Arnold School of Pastoral Ethics. Somebody that wants to make you think everything's all right and talk down to you when they ain't doing right now we step over into hypocrisy. But somebody that messes up all the time but keeps on coming, how many times do I have to preach? There's no safer place, no better place to fail than the church. We, we kind of don't like that a little bit. I, I really don't know why. Because trust me when I tell you, you're going to go through the desert spiritually and you're going to need that mercy yourself. I hit a clunker right then. But I'm fixing to move into the word of God, but I want you to gnaw on that for a little while. Every now and again, Sister Leanne, I think it would be good maybe in our dreams for the Lord to take us back to where he brought us from. I know he does, but we need to acknowledge it and wake up and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for reminding me where you brought me from. And if you brought me from there, all this stuff I've been noticing, ain't no big deal. Ain't no big deal. Are you ready to get into the word of the Lord? Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 21. I wanted to do about five verses, but I didn't have time. Matter of fact, I don't know if I got time to do one. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 21 says, Remember, this church is a microcosm of the heavenly church. And they have been baptized in Jesus' name, repented of their sins, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and the supernatural operates. But the Lord knows, the, the, they know where they've been brought from. They were superstitious and, and they were idol worshipers and, and they were really flesh pleasers and they were by nature the children of wrath, okay? That's one, one descriptive account. So the book of Ephesians is 
verses 1, 2, and 3. I mean, chapters 1, it's two part, chapters 1, 2, and 3, and then 4, 5, and 6. And we're going to get it over into 5, which talks about how to live holy. All right? And all of you know, as soon as I get started on holiness, and I know y'all want me to go to preaching on the clothesline, but I'm going to preach on the psychiatrist's couch first. What's going on in that gourd of ours? Because if we don't have our mind lined up, won't none of the rest of us be lined up no matter what we look like. And then after your mind comes your mouth. It's coming. Y'all think, ooh, Jesus, now wait till I get to rolling. But I'm taking us there right now in the Holy Ghost. Submitting yourself. Y'all feel Jesus in the house tonight? Y'all feel that anointing? He's working on people. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, I started studying. I was, like I said, I was studying about five verses. And then I got to this one and I went to BibleHub.com. And if you don't use that in your study, I write it down on your paper and use it. It's got like, I don't know, maybe 25 or 30 different versions of every scripture you look up. Uh, 12 or 14 commentaries, word studies. It's an incredible resource. Anybody use it? Anybody use BibleHub.com? It's an incredible resource, and it's totally free. Totally free. But in BibleHub.com, there is one particular word study resource that I really like, and it's called Help Word Studies. And it basically puts this entire verse into one word. And that word is hupotasso. And it is a compound word. And the first hupo comes from the original word hypo, which means under. And tasso is the second part, which means arrange. So in effect, Ephesians 5 and 21 says, live under God's arrangement. Under God's arrangement. Now what exactly does that mean, you might ask? Well, let me take you there. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 15, talking about Jesus. This is some doctrine. I want you to get it. This is some powerful apostolic doctrine. Who, who's he talking about? Verse 15, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Now, Ellicott's commentary said that that word image is used in the New Testament for real an essential embodiment as distinguished from mere likeness. Did you get, you stay there with me? God bless you. You stay there with me? It means that Jesus Christ was the real and essential embodiment, embodiment of the invisible God. He was not just like God, he was God. He was God. Now, it says Jesus is the image of the invisible God, comma, the firstborn of every creature. Now, that properly rendered would be written, he was first among others who follow. He was first among others who follow. Yes, Hear me as I tell you, if you're called a Christian, that means you fit the bill. So do we? Do we fit the bill? Jesus was the firstborn of every creature. Now I'm going to break in down, down into that so we understand it. That means he was the first among others who follow. In this case, all of creation is arranged and functions in perfect submission to their created purpose. All creation functions and is arranged in perfect submission to their created purpose just like Jesus was. I'm going to break it down for you in just a minute. In Philippians 2, 5 through 8, the Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 
who being in the form of God, same word as the image earlier, same, same principle, he was God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He did not come to earth living as God. He came to earth living as a man. Okay? But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, here's where we go, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hear me as I tell you this. He perfectly fulfilled his created purpose. And he put himself in position to do it through obedience. See it in the word there? He humbled himself. Remember when Peter tried to cut the old boy's head off and missed and hit his ear? Remember that? I never believe he was just trying to cut an ear off. He was trying to take an old boy's head off and he just wasn't that good. But the Lord picked his ear back up and healed him and what did he say? Remember what he said? Listen, boy, I don't need you defending me. He said, if I wanted to, I could call down 12 legions of angels and they would be here right then. What does that tell us? He didn't want to because his creative purpose overwhelmed his desire to be defended. And he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, how do you reconcile what I just told you with that Jesus Christ is the firstborn of every creature? Look at, look at verse 8 and reconcile Jesus is the firstborn of every creature, which I told you means first among others who follow. Yep, but you got ahead of him. What's eight say? He is obedient unto death, which the death was his purpose. After that, it was spirit. Well, not completely. The burial was on Joseph of Arimathea, and then the resurrection was the work of the spirit. Because the Bible says if the same spirit that brought Christ forth from the grave dwell in you, it'll quicken your mortal body. He became obedient unto the death. What happened right before Jesus died on the cross? He cried, it is finished. He was obedient unto the death because the death was his created purpose. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And without the death, there cannot be a resurrection, nor a burial. There's got to be a death. The death was the culmination of his created purpose. He was born to die. So he became first among others who follow. What does that mean? We too are born to die. But I want you, don't get, don't get hung up right here. Who's he writing to? Church folks. There is a level of commitment that if you want to fulfill your created purpose, you need to stop looking for it in somebody else and start looking for it in Jesus Christ. Because we'll find somebody, Brother David, we'll find somebody that will allow us, Brother Ronnie, to justify doing less than our best. 
But the only thing is, the Lord said, if you measure yourself among yourself, that's unwise. You know why it's unwise? Not because it's wrong, but because you're going to fall short of your created purpose measuring yourself by somebody else. We've got to measure ourselves by Jesus Christ because he is the first fruits of every creature. Now hear me when I tell you this. Verse number 16. Y'all having fun? Man, I'm loving this. This is incredible. I love it. I've been waiting all day to get here. For by him, by who? Jesus Christ were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, without getting into a oneness uh, uh, expedition, by him, By him. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether it be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers. That you can see and that you can't see. In the heavens or in the earth, all of it was created by God. By Jesus Christ. Now, I don't want you to get confused. I'm not preaching dualism, nor am I preaching the Trinity. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh, but he was also fully man. Okay? Now look here. Jesus Christ, the manifestation of the living God, is the measurement of by which everything was created. Now, what do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. A perfect creation, perfectly ordered to fulfill a perfect purpose. When the Lord said, let there be light, and there was light, when he hung the moon in the sky and the sun in the sky, when he hung the planets where they are, and when he set everything where he wanted, he did it according to the measurement of Jesus Christ. What measurement's that? Him being obedient unto death. He never woke up a day out of the will of God. Now, you've, you've, are you seeing what I'm talking about? As Jesus lived his life, so functions the world. As Jesus lived his life, so functions the world. I'm going to explain it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, he was perfect in every way. Okay? Let me hang with me just a minute. The earth. I did not take time to look up all of this because I wouldn't get done by next week. But you're welcome to look up at it yourself. The earth spins on its axis at the perfect slant. If it moves any at all, we all fly off into space. It moves on its, it rotates at the perfect speed for the seasons and everything to work just like they are. You with me? You, under, you, you follow me? The moon works just like it's supposed to and sets in the perfect place so its gravitational pull makes the tide go in and come out. Works perfect. The planets align perfectly. The earth, you can look this stuff up, it's science, you can look it up. The earth is in the perfect distance from the sun. If it was any closer, we'd burn up. If it was any further, we would freeze to death. Brother Ronnie, it's perfect. It's, it's all perfect. And it's all by Jesus Christ. As he lived his life in complete and perfect 
order. Order. The world works by order. And works perfectly. You can look all that stuff up, and I didn't even get all the way started. Okay? It works perfectly. That is all except man. It's true. It's true. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you some things. It is mankind, God's crowning achievement, who only retains the power of choice as to whether we will align with our created purpose or not. And sin is the avenue whereby you leave your created purpose. When man got out of order, are you ready? It resulted in all of creation being affected. And the same creation earnestly awaits the ultimate reconciliation of man with God. Romans chapter 8, verse 22 through 25 said, All of creation travails waiting on man to get where he belongs. But that's not going to happen, Brother Ronnie, until so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and the mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Now, we like to shout that because that we ain't going to die no more. You know, we're going to go to heaven and we're going to live forever. But guess what? I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Let me tell you something, honey. Before sin, the trees didn't die. The bushes didn't die. The, the sharks didn't die. The lions didn't have to fight one another. The, you didn't have to worry about a mangy dog come running after you when you visited somebody. Everything that has happened out of order is our fault. It is. The whole creation, Sister Maria, eagerly anticipates us being once again aligned with our created purpose. Nothing's going to be right until we get right. Yes, sir. Sure. Absolutely. We weren't made to die. But he told them, don't eat of that tree. Because if you eat of that tree, you'll surely die. But he didn't get, make it impossible for them to eat. They could have eat. Because we're the only creation that has a choice to leave its created order. Now, and, and, and don't misunderstand me. I believe you But when a little kid wanders into somebody else's yard and their dog bites them, it ain't a good thing. But that dog's just doing what it's supposed to do. It's not a good thing. I'm not for it. Get rid of them. I value the little kid over the dog. Trust me. All right? But I'm telling you, we get all bent out of shape because people make mistakes and people mess up and people do stupid things. But you cannot make them do right but get ourselves in order. That's, right. That's all we can do. But we can do it. All right, let me get into the word here a little bit more. As Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice, 
And hear me when I tell you, he was not only perfect because he never sinned. He was not perfect because he didn't do anything wrong. He was perfect because he did everything right. Not only in the absence of sin, but in walking a path determined by the will and foreknowledge of God, he fulfilled a perfect purpose without which we have no hope. And in following that perfect path, we too can arrive at a place where we live fully according to our created purpose. We can get to a place where we live fully according to our created purpose. And I want you to hear me when I say this because I'm not backing down on it. And we cannot settle for anything less. Every obstacle to us living under God's order has already been rendered powerless. There is no power on earth that can force you out of God's order or living under God's arrangement. By him were all things created. Everything operates as it was created, including the devil and his angels, the spiritual and the natural realm. By him and for him. I, I didn't, I started to put this in there and I didn't. But Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. We like to quote that. But if you read a couple of verses up before that, he said, I'm the one that created the waster to destroy said, I created the bellows that blows the coals that lights up the fire in your life. Okay? Everything was created by him and for him. We have no purpose outside that which was established in Christ Jesus before the world began. Ephesians 1 and 4. Verse 17, and he is before, I love it. I'm going to get excited, man. I want to get done, but I, I, I'm just having so much fun. What y'all think? Is, is, y'all enjoying this? It's some good stuff? Huh? Well, I'm, I'm having a ball. I'm having a ball. I bet that, yep, it did. Breathe. That's what this thing said. <clears throat> Verse 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. I looked up commentary Barnes notes. It says this scripture is the equivalent of Genesis 1 and 1 and John 1 and 1. That's what Barnes' note said, which is strongly Trinitarian. Says it's the equivalent of Genesis 1 and 1 and John 1 and 1. Genesis 1 and 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. In the beginning. And Jesus Christ is before all things. But he didn't incarnate himself until he was born in a manger in Bethlehem. Brother Larry, he was God from the beginning. But everything God made was with Jesus in mind. Why is that? Because Jesus Christ is the only way we can connect to God. Without Jesus Christ coming in the flesh, the man Christ Jesus, Miss Jane, we cannot relate to God, nor can he relate to us. Oh, let me, let me get here. Let me get here. That, that's that, that's a, equivalent of Genesis 1 and 1 and John 1 and 1 completely destroys anything but the oneness of God. All right? By him. By him. There's that again. Same thing. By him. By Jesus Christ. All things consist. That is the Greek word synestomy. And it means to be compacted all together. Here's the deal. Everything works like it's supposed to because of Jesus Christ. He is literally holding together and sustaining the orderly system of space called the cosmos. That means that without Jesus Christ, the whole world would fly apart. 
He is not just as a guardian, but he's the perfect example of under God's arrangement. Without Jesus Christ, there would be no purpose in allowing the world to continue to exist. When he was born in a manger, he literally saved the world. He saved the world by coming. His life, death, burial, and resurrection allow access to a hope that only gives hope in this life, but also, that not only gives hope in this life, but also eternal life. Jesus literally is the answer for the world today. Literally. But any life lived out from under God's arrangement is out of order and destined for death and eternal damnation. Eternal torment in a devil's hell. Yes, ma'am. It was. That's right, I've seen that. Yeah, doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, and that is true because we live a life out of order, and then we want it to be God's fault. Will you all hang with me for just a few more minutes? I'm, I'm coming down the home stretch. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, 1 Thessalonians, who's that written to? Church people, I've already told you that. So the first part, let's break it down. And the very God, that's talking about the God. Himself, literally translated himself, fully and completely God. I am that I am, the God of creation. El Shaddai, Elohim, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Sidkenu, and Jehovah everything. That very one, not another one, not a many one, not a partial one, the God of peace. That comes from the Greek word Irene or Irene. And it means wholeness or when all essential parts are joined together. So the very God of peace, the very God of creative order, the very God that makes everything in the world work like it's supposed to. Listen, Brother Jerry, the ocean can't go past where he said let it go. Have y'all ever, have y'all, I know there's tsunamis and stuff that happen, but Amanda and I were at, at, in South Carolina on vacation. Has anybody ever stood by the ocean and got scared? Me. Me. Oh, it's big. It's scary. It's scary. But you know what? It's only going to go as far as he says it can go. There's a reason why, Brother Jerry, they can build multi-million dollar hotels right on the edge of the beach because it's proven it's only going to go that far. Thousands. There are places in the ocean that no human's ever been. We're talking five, six miles deep, but it stays right where it's supposed to. We're the only ones that have it. We're the only ones that have it but he'll fix it so you can. Look here. The very God, the God, the one that said let there be light and there was light, that's the one that's going to work on you. He don't send uh, a worker or somebody beneath him. When you get touched, it's the God of peace, of wholeness, when all essential parts are joined together. And the very God of peace sanctify. That word means make holy. 
So he's doing a work in me. And he's making me holy. How does he know what holy is? Because he's holy. I'm called to be holy. Right? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Look here. The very God of order, the very God of peace, he is going to put you where he wants you if you let him. Because he can do nothing else. But Sister Maria, we can't do that without his spirit within us. Because without his spirit, we're unregenerate. We don't know right from wrong. We don't. How many tried to be God in your life before? Every hand in this room ought to raise up. How many passed? Not one. We all flunked. We all flunked out of God's school. Look here. Look here. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. The very God of order puts you back together, make you holy, make you right. Can't nothing do that but the Holy Ghost. You can't be good enough. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Okay, you got to have the Spirit of God in you. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you don't belong to Him. That's the book. That's the book. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this place right now. And I pray God. Whoa, 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 I jumped ahead. Sanctify, make you holy because look at this word holy. I put a bunch of stars by it and then I skipped over it anyway. Holy, that means all of it. All right? It comes from the Greek word holotelis, and it comes from a compound word. Holo means whole, and telos. Did I write it down on your paper? End purpose. Holy. What do you think that means? That means I feel Jesus. That means the Holy Ghost has finally got me where he's wanted me all along. Um, he said, I'm going to sanctify you holy. Oh, when I read that, I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm about to have a fit. I put you back together completely. I didn't put you. Listen, you, you know, the, the Lord doesn't take a bunch of scraps that you give him and, you know, build a crooked doghouse or something out of you. When he puts you back together, he puts you back just like he wanted you. Oh, I'm, I'm not to the best part. I love it. I love it. I love it. I hope somebody hears the word of the Lord this morning. This or this, It feels like Sunday morning. Excuse me. Or this evening, it may be morning by the time I get done. Get ready. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body now, our spirit, that's the part of us that knows God. Soul, that's the you that's ruled by your senses, your feelings, in case you was wondering, your emotions, your desires, what pleases the flesh, what makes me feel good. And the body is the house for the spirit and the soul. And Brother Ronnie, he didn't say, if we just get your spirit and soul right, we'll be happy. He said, I want your whole spirit, soul, and body. You know who that is, Brother David? That's all of me. There ain't no more of me. All of you. So that means he's going to perfect all of us. So that means when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you better be ready to say, all of me, Fair game. There can't be anything we hold back from him because if they do, he's not going to be Lord of nothing if he can't be Lord of everything. Because you can't be halfway in order and halfway not. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Come on, you say, well, I can. Go out there, take your, one of your wheels off your car and make it go the other direction and see how your car works. The car only works when everything's in order. Oh, man. Spirit, soul, and body. As you grow in the Lord, the Holy Ghost 
will impact you in all three areas. Does anybody see where pastor's going with this stuff? Huh? Get ready. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved. This is what I've been waiting on all night. I nearly, I've, I've done talked this like 10 times. I ain't never found this. The Lord was saving it till tonight. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved. You ready? It means maintain. It means guard. And I love it now. It's highlighted on your paper in bold letters. Keep intact. Blameless until the coming of the Lord. That means at the top of the verse, he put me back together. And at the bottom of the verse, he kept me that way. <laughs> Where's all the people that said everybody sins all the time? Everybody messes up all the time. I've got a book that says uh, the Lord will put me back together and he'll make me holy. He'll make me holy body, soul, and spirit and keep me that way. It, oh, I wish somebody would hear the word of the Lord. You're not destined to fail. He's made every opportunity for us to live just like he wants us to. In order, fulfilling our created purpose. You weren't made to fill a seat at the church house. You weren't made to weld and you weren't made to plan and you weren't made to iron clothes. You were made to do the work of the Lord. And do it perfectly and completely. But it'll only happen under God's arrangement. Spirit, soul, and body. It is reflected as we submit ourselves to God. It is manifested in our submission one to another. You know why I got to be submitted to you? Because I can't do this without you. I ain't that smart. I'm not that talented. I'm not that gifted. You see, the Lord puts you in the body as it pleased him, where he wants you. But you got to submit yourself to the rest of the body for it to work. And it won't work if it don't work right. Under God's arrangement, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Lord, I love you tonight. I appreciate you so much. I thank you for your word, man. You're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good. Privileged to pastor these precious people that you've planted me to be your under shepherd here, God. I pray that we, we willingly surrender today our spirit, soul, and body, all of me. Lord, I want there to be nothing that's off limits to you. Order my steps. Order my life. Order my ways, God, just like you lived. I, I want to shoot for that. I don't want to fall beneath. I, I don't want to shoot for something less. But, God, you are the reason why salvation is available because you lived a perfect life. By you, everything was created. Line me up, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Deborah's going to get baptized. I didn't get to tell you all this. I didn't get to tell you all this Sunday, but uh, Brother Ronnie was, tell, tell, tell that real quick. Well, when she said, I already done that. When she said, I already spoke in tongues. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Y'all pay attention, Brother Ronnie, not me. I went back and I said, you know, I don't want to push you, but if you really want to pray for
This is Deborah, Michael, Debbie, right? All right. She's going to be Debbie Michael Jesus when she comes up out of this water. Everything she's ever had in her life, wrong, contrary, that, that, that flawed her garment in the eyes of the Lord is going to be gone in this water. In the name of Jesus. Pray with me right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Debbie. I pray, God, that you will give her the faith to walk in newness of life. I pray that you'll give her the courage to surrender her life completely to you and experience the joy of being perfectly ordered in every way. I defy every army of hell, every lie the devil has told, every shred of doubt and fear. Loose her from that. Let it stay in this baptistry. And I declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless her. Bless her family. Bless her friends. Bless the mission. Everybody she comes in contact with, let them be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. One of y'all want to hold that for me? And get over here close. So hold your hand. Hold your nose with one hand. Let your other hand right there. Deborah Michael, upon the confession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, seeing you've already received the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said it's a down payment. He did. He said it's the earnest of your inheritance. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise for what he's doing. Amen. Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, that'd be Elements class at 11 o'clock. Remember, I won't be here, but I'm expecting all of y'all to be here. If you can, please be here. We love you. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.